Hello, Diego. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Hey, good evening. How are you? Mm, not good. Why? Are you working? Um, yeah, I'm working and taking my dinner and I... Having, you're having dinner. I'm uh -huh. having my dinner with my son. Ah, many things to, to will be. It's not cool. I don't like it. At least you got a job. No. Think about it. I Always. change. You will I change. change. I change job. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. It's much. It's much. It's too much it's work. Too much. Yeah. It's too much, and I don't like it because. Uh, I think that is too much for one people, person. Too much for one person to do. Yeah, yeah. You have this. So you're overloaded. I need help. Wow, okay. But I don't know. It's time to, to To give a extra mile, but good evening, yeah. good evening everybody. Good evening, Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Uh, you have to give the extra mile. That's true. In any yeah. job, in any job, I mean, even if you don't like what you're doing, yeah, something better will come up. Hey, Manuel. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, everybody. I'm ready for the action. <laughs> hey, guys, where are you? Just check something really quick. I just can't believe we are only three. Just three. <laughs> it's crazy. Teacher, what is the difference in just or only? Only. You know, there. I was reading that there is no difference. No difference. Um, but only is like saying solo, solo que or solamente. Mm, okay. Just... Okay. And just is solo. Solo, ah, only solamente, or solo que. So there's yes. not much difference because you can say, uh, I just want to tell you, mm -hmm. I, I only want to tell you. Ah, okay. So, yeah, but what I always say is, listen to yourself. What sounds better? Every time you use just or only, what sounds better? Mm -hmm. I just need a job. I only need a job. Hmm. I just need a job. I only need a job. I can only imagine. Like the song. Oh, good point. It, when you use models, I can only, I can just imagine. Hmm. I can only imagine. Solamente me puedo imaginar. Mm -hmm. I can just imagine. Solo me puedo imaginar. Mm. It depends on the context, right? I can just imagine. I can only imagine. Yeah, yeah that's a good example. Okay, so really quick. Um, how to use wood with rather is... is basically the same as saying would prefer okay let's start by saying that um let's go with this while we wait for the others i'm just gonna do this topic really quick i i guess you saw it on the on the ice breaking 
uh, page that we use, right, Manuel? Okay. The random questions. At the bottom, there is a whole lesson about would you rather Oh, very good. As, as questions, right? So, um, well, let's start by saying that would rather, rather, don't say rather, it's would rather. Rather. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, remember, you can contract would like this and say I'd rather, I'd rather, you'd rather, would you rather, okay? And yes, to make a question, you start with the auxiliary, in this case, a modal. With with, with modal, would. Mm -hmm. would. Would. That's right. Would. Would you rather end following the rules of the models? After the model, you need a verb on its base form. Okay? You need a more uh, a ve uh, verb on its base form so i would rather and then the verb on its base form i would rather eat i would rather go okay teacher y, y la palabra would en español uh, would es como termina con aquella eh, expresión ia exactly yes Preferiría, i would buy compraría mm -hmm. yeah there's no translation to spanish of would it's just ria ria yeah. so i would rather go to miami i would rather go to miami then then uh -huh. and then you are comparing two ideas then now i would rather go to miami than what in Paris. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Yeah. Ah, cities. She said she'd rather be a frog before dating you. <laughs> she said she'd rather be a frog before dating you. Before dating you. Okay. Now on the page that we have on the um, random questions, on the random topics, um, they make questions, right? Would you rather be a cow or a tree? Random questions. Would you rather be a cow or a tree? Okay. And, and there are some funny questions because this is, I mean, hypothetical questions, right? An unreal situation. And I want to leave that clear. Would is unreal future. Unreal. That, that's, like... that's what it does. That's what it does is unreal, unreal future, unreal circumstance. Okay. That, that's what it does, a real future or hypothetical situation. It's, it's something hypothetical, it's not true, okay? I'd rather be, there's a song from my favorite band, uh, Pearl Jam, called Animal. I'd rather be an animal. I'd rather be with an animal, it says. Okay, so, is this clear? Yeah, and, and the the word prefer is the same. Basically, yeah, you could say I will prefer to go. Mm -hmm. I will prefer to go or going to Miami than Paris. I will prefer to go to Miami than Paris. I will prefer going to Miami than Paris. Okay. She said she would prefer. to be a frog before dating you. She said she'd prefer being a frog than dating you. Remember that after one verb, you have to separate it, whether you use an infinitive or a gerund, right? She said she'd prefer being a frog before dating you. 
would you re would you prefer to be a cow or a tree? It's the same thing. Okay. Y aquí por qué no lleva bean? Solo es be. Would you rather? Oh, good. You don't need that because this is not a verb. Oh. Esto no es un verbo. Mm. Yeah. Prefer is a verb, but rather is not a verb. Y aquí I prefer en la anterior. She said she, she, she preferred, preferred being or to be. So, puedes ocupar el infinitivo, uh -huh. to be, o el gerundio. Ah, ok. Eso es una regla general. Separar verbos con la preposición to y el verbo en su forma base, o uh -huh. ocupar un gerundio. Pero tenés que separar los verbos cuando están al mismo tiempo gramatical. Ok. Questions. No? Okay. It's 8.12. Let me do the attendance. Okay. Oh, my God. We are seven. Huh? I'll rather go blind than eat a James. I don't get it. I didn't get it, Mario Jose. Okay. Hi. Good evening, Susana. Welcome. Good evening. How are Thank you? you we missed you. I'm sorry. Yesterday, I don't. Uh, I didn't. I didn't uh, connect uh, in class. I I I had. I had a. Uh, uh, Headache. <laughs> I, had, I had a headache. I had a headache. Mm -hmm. You had a headache. Okay. But you could have been connected, you know, and just as a listener or something. And try not to miss too many classes because. Yes. Siempre al, fin, al final, cada minuto cuenta al final de. Mm -hmm. al final. Yes, but it's a. Uh, I. I, in, in the moment, you know, I. I think <laughs> I, I could I could I couldn't uh -huh. I couldn't think repeat I couldn't think I, I couldn't think and uh, this uh, connecting only but it's a uh, but it's a bad <laughs> my my head head please uh -huh. no yeah, it's I difficult don't... I had I had a yes. migraine this morning but yes ah, it's, <laughs> it's not easy hey Manuel how, how are you on the on the whatsapp chat What's your first digits on your phone number? Just the first digits of your phone number. It's the same number. What is it? Uh, it's just, I don't see a name. I want to tag you. I want to tag you on, on WhatsApp, but I, I don't find you. Uh, <laughs> uh... Just give me the first four, don't worry. Okay, mi número. Yeah, that's your, yeah, the first four numbers. 78854. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, seven, eight, five, four. That's it, that's it, that's it. Oh, okay, I got you. There you go. That's a link with uh, the explanation and some exercises, examples of would rather. So before we move on, let me do the attendance. Um, Carlos Alfredo Palomo Pineda, Claudia María Meléndez Santos, Cristian Natalie Erazo Rogel, Diana Elizabeth Chereguiño Martínez. Here, teacher. Thank you. Diego Armando López Rivas. Here, teacher. Thank you. Jorge Humberto Vela Funes. Juan Carlos Rivas Jovel. Manuel Antonio Palma. Present teacher. Marilena Guadalupe Peñate Escobar. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Mario José Valle Castaneda. Present teacher. Thank you. Nelson René Olmedo Figueroa. Norma Carolina Villeda Ábalos. Present teacher. 
Silvia Suleima Rodríguez de González. Present teacher. Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. Present teacher. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Present teacher. Excellent. Okay, guys. So let's move on with the class. Yesterday we reviewed the um, simple present. Today we're going to do a similar exercise to warm up to warm up the class. So, but I'm not going to split you this time. We are just too few. We are just eight in the classroom. So I will just give you an example. Okay. And here in the class, you will prepare something to tell the class. Okay. So, hmm. Tell me about yourself, something so easy. About yourself. Oh my God, this lecture. And what do you do every day for a living? Okay. So as simple as it sounds, Okay, so as simple as it sounds, tell me about yourself and what do you do every day for a living? So let me show you an example. This is simple present, okay? Hi, my name is Rafael, I'm 41 years old. I'm married, I have three kids, I live in Mexicanos. I'm a teacher and I also work at a call center. I love speaking English, it's my favorite language over Spanish, actually. Well, because, um, you know, there are a lot of information in English that you can find on the internet nowadays. Um, what I do for a living, well, every day I dedicate basically <laughs> my entire time to my family, uh, but in the morning it's, it's the same routine, you know, start I start working at 5 a.m. But since I'm working from home, I take care of waking up the kids and then make sure they take a shower, they get ready while my wife cooks the breakfast and everything. Then they leave um, my wife to work and the kids to school. So I stay home working all the morning. After um, my work finishes at 1230, I drive and take my kids from school. And then sometimes we spend time in, in the house, you know, doing their homework. Sometimes they go to Senar to learn about art or to karate, <laughs> karate lessons or the gym, you know. But the point is in the afternoon, we have to do something together. Also in my spare time, I do my hobby, which is repairing my car. Um, sometimes I do the cleaning on the house. And in the evenings, I teach a class from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. That's what I usually do. Um, weekends are for the family. We try, we always try to go somewhere, bicycling, you know, just hang around. Not expensive places because we don't have too much money, but we we like to enjoy time together, you know, that's all. That's very important. And we go to church on sa Saturday evenings, which is very important. Oh, I play the guitar at church as well. I sing at church and that's the most important part of my life. And that's me. That's it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do in this time is give you Five minutes. It's 8.20. You have five minutes. Think. Gather the ideas. Put it on paper. Just the ideas. No quiero que reescribas todo lo que vas a decir. No, just the main ideas. Si vieron el video de just a minute, the jam technique, es muy importante tener presente de qué quieres hablar. So, five minutes. 8.21, five minutes. One, two, three, let's go.
If you have any questions, let me know.
Let me know if you're ready. Me, teacher. Ready? Yes. <laughs> okay. <Try>. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's wait for the others. Let me know, guys, whenever you're ready. I'm ready, teacher. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, let's see. Uh, who wants to go first? Me, teacher. Okay, Manuel. So, again, what's the question? Tell me about yourself and what do you do every day for a living? One, two, three, action. Okay, good evening, everybody. My name is Manuel Palma. I am 40, 41 years old. And well, uh, uh, let me tell you about my myself. Uh, every day I, I get up early. I, I helped my, I have my wife in in her business um, we prepare different products in the morning and then I I I take a shower and I I left my home at 7 30 and then I I I go to my my company and my specific duty is to is to deliver documents and and bills uh, or to our clients and this is in the in the morning this is my specific job and when i finish uh, early my my job I return my I return home and then I I do uh, something in my house and my my daughter is yeah is a is a student but she she is a independent in her in her her uh, in her study and her uh, I don't know uh, well uh, at the rest of the day for example uh, five and seven 
uh, on on Monday and and Thursday I go to the church and and then when I return I I take my 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 class my my English class and I <laughs> let me tell you I I don't I don't like wash clothes <laughs> but but I I like to wash my motorcycle <laughs> and and I would like. I would like learn to to play the guitar, but <laughs> the, I I never I never have learned, but I have a guitar. <laughs> this this is that's that's all about me. That's all about me. That's okay, me. good job. Okay, Manuel, let's see. Um, let's go with your feedback really quick. So, uh, first of all, let's see, head, pronunciation, you say help. 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 As a homework, while you're driving your motorcycle around, say, do that exercise the whole day. Okay, so it doesn't turn difficult. Because there is a difference between hell, okay, hell, hell, which is the word, right, and stop. I don't know a word ending on t. Hot, hot, hot. It's different than. Okay, I help my wife with her business. With her business. Okay. Her business. I left my home 7.30. I leave. I leave. I leave the house. I leave the house. Or I leave home. You leave home. I leave home at, oh, at 7.30. Always at, at, when you say the time. I do something in my house. Another way of saying that you do things in your house, like washing the clothes, washing the dishes, whatever, is that you do home chores. I do home chores. Home chores. I do the home chores. You know, I help. I help with the home chores, which is good. At the rest of the day, uh, for the rest of the day, for example, and in there, you missed the idea. Uh, for the rest of the day, for the rest of the day, I usually, whatever, right? I, okay, for the rest of the day, uh, between five and seven, okay? Or between five or 7 p.m., around five or 7 p.m. I don't like wash clothes. And here is your main area of improvement. Aquí está la área principal de oportunidad que tenemos. I don't like wash clothes. I would like learn to play the guitar. So in these two sentences, you're missing something. What is it? What are you missing in that two sentences? In those two sentences. I don't like. Okay. The preposition. I don't like to wash clothes. I will like to learn to play the guitar. I will like to learn playing the guitar. I will like to learn playing the guitar. Remember, either it's infinitive or gerund. So that, that's your main area right now. Work on that preposition or, I mean, mm -hmm. infinitive or gerund after one verb. Especially on like, have, want, need, love, and hate. They're both in necessidad. Again, love, like, want, hate. Yeah. Have. Okay. I have to pay the bills. I want to pay the bills. I like to pay the bills. Good. Es diferente cuando tenés un noun después del verbo. I like pupusas. I love her. 
I love my job. I hate my job. See, you don't need the preposition. Good job. Okay. Me. Somebody else said me. Who is next? Me. Wendy. Okay, good. Wendy. Ready? One, two, three. Tell me about yourself and what do you do for a living? My name is Wendy Zabaleta. I am 41 years old. I am single. I am bachelor's in the business administration. I work in a travel agency. Its name is Genesis Travel. I live in Santa Ana. I live only with my parents and my dog. I have no children. I start my work 8 a.m. and finish 5.30 p.m. I wake up 6.30 a.m. I take a shower, I take my breakfast. Um, I start my work 8 a.m. 8 a.m. and finish 5, 5.30 p.m. Uh, with one hour and a half for my lunch. Uh, I connect to my English class from 8 to, to 10 p.m. and I sleep at uh, 11 p.m. Um, I work from Monday to Friday all day. Uh, Saturday I work only in the morning and Sunday I go to the church in the morning. And I, I clean no, I wash. No, I wash the dishes. And Saturday, Saturday, and and Sunday, and I clean the house, or and wash my clothes, and in in Sunday in the afternoon. Easy, very good. Great job. Okay. Um, I am bachelor in business administration. I like that. Okay. I'm bachelor in business administration. Yeah, that's okay. I work in travel agency. What are we missing there? I work in a travel agency. Okay. Hay dos maneras de hacer eso. Las maneras correctas son I work for a travel agency. Ojo con esto todos. Ojo con esto todos. I work for a travel agency. No estoy diciendo el nombre de la agencia de viajes porque hay muchas, ¿eh? Muchas agencias de viaje. I work for a travel agency. Ahora bien, I work siendo más específico I work at Expedia, for example. Okay. Ojo con eso. For or at. Okay. I work for a travel agency. I work at Expedia. I work at TACA. So, si this is for, sí, sí, vas sí. a mencionar, no es específico. For es general. No, at. At, ya es específico, y agregas el nombre. I work at a hotel. I work at, I'm sorry, no, no, no. I work for a hotel. Okay. I work at Marriott. Okay. Okay. That's a general rule and sounds better, a lot better. I start my work 8 a.m. and finish 5.30 p.m. ¿Qué nos falta ahí, Wendy? I start my work at 8 a.m. and finish 5.30 p.m. Two. Two? Mm. No, no, I don't know. Four. Hmm. <laughs> Repeat, I don't know. For me. <laughs> I don't no, know. No, nada es difícil, nada es difícil. Eso no, no se repita eso. Es fácil. Okay, yo, okay. Que lo, yo lo voy a lograr. Okay, easy, lo... easy. <laughs> okay, I start my work at 8 a.m. and finish at, at 
5.30. Okay. ok, siempre que digo la hora específica de una actividad, le agrego el at. At okay. 8 a.m., at 4 p.m., at 5.30 p.m. Ok, pronunciation, break fast. Break fast. Breakfast. Okay. Repeat, repeat a lot. Breakfast. Breakfast. Better. Okay. With one hour and a half and a half for my lunch. With one hour and a half. Eso lo pongo en mayúscula como para que se entienda la corrección ahí. Okay. No es que así lo van a escribir. Cuidado. Okay. So, with one hour and a half for my lunch. I sleep at 11 p.m. It's not usual. I don't know at what time I fell asleep. I fall asleep. I don't know at what time. Norma, do you know at what time do you fall asleep? 11 p.m. Are you sure? So, I mean, it's like you fall asleep and, oh, it's 11 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> right? No, you go to bed. You go to bed at no, oh. there there's a difference, you see? I don't know at what time. I, I go to bed at eleven thirty most part of the times. I think I fall asleep at about twelve thirty or so. I don't know. So think think think. Very good. Great job, Wendy. Okay, who wants to continue? Just one more person. One more person talking for two minutes, the most. Somebody, tell me about yourself and what do you do for a living? No? We leave it there. Hello, Dianita. How are you, Dianita? I see, I see you happier. More, oh, ready, more relaxed. Tired. <laughs> Always tired. Ah, come on, don't be tired. Uh, Marilena. I'm trying to. Okay, let's, um, let's do it. One, two, three. Tell me about yourself and what do you do for a living? Okay, stop, 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 Marilena, Marilena. Turn off your camera. Let's try. Vamos a probar apagando la cámara para ver si se le escucha mejor. Please. The bandwidth. Okay, try. Try. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Maria Elena. I am work at Educo, Foundation Educo. I am a nutritionist. Um, I start at my work 6 a.m. and finish around 5 p.m. But the um, travel is long. I daily from San Salvador to San Vicente. And the morning is no problem, but in the afternoon, the traffic is always horrible. I, I don't know how do you say divorcial. I'm divorced. I'm divorced. And take two children and living with my family, my mother, my uncle, my sister, her son, and her husband, and my two sons. And Saturdays, <laughs> um, take uh, many activities with my sons. And she, she, no, what? Um, they go to the scout. I don't know how do you say it, Squadron 51, 51. Um, <laughs> and practice many activities in the park. It is uh, fun because um, I go to the park with they. And Come with me, my nephew, and walk all the all the park with the 
boy. Uh, he's uh, one year old and I love this baby. <laughs> Okay, good job. Okay, that's it. Why are you afraid of speaking? Thank you, thank you. Okay, let's see. So first sentence. I am work at Ude Educo. I am work at Educo. Um, tengo dos opciones. I am working at Educo or I work at Educo, which is like the most logical, right? I am, no, I work. Si aún estoy metiendo el verbo to be en cada oración que digo, podría ser un problema, pero no lo hace. Um, so I work at Educo. And start at my work at 6 a.m. And start working at 6 a.m. Okay. But the travel is long. How else can I say that, guys? The trip, right? The trip is long. The trip is long, but the trip is long. But it is a long trip. A long trip because of the traffic. Very good. La principal área de oportunidad que encuentro, María Elena, es el uso de los sujetos, porque siempre empiezo con el verbo. Take two children. Y una cosa, el verbo take se me está convirtiendo en una muletía. Entonces, en lugar de take, quería decir I have two children. Ojo, es children, no children. So, I have two children. El plural de child o kid. Right? I have two children and I live with... Ta -ra 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 -ra. Okay. On Saturdays... Mm -hmm. I do activities. I do activities with my sons. Entonces, ese take podría ser una muletilla. En lugar de take, ahí, ahí tiene que haber otro verbo. It's a fun. It's funny. It's fun. Sin, sin el a. It's fun because I go to the park with them. Good job. And I take my nephew. El, el sujeto. I take my nephew with us. I take my nephew with us. That's it. ¿Cómo corrijo esto? La tarea, la tarea. Todos los días, todos los días. Y les repito a todos. No se decepcionen. Si les corrijo algo, eh, aprovechenme. Que no les voy a durar mucho. Vea, así les digo a mis hijos. Este, en serio, eh, aún pueden corregir mucho. Están avanzado uno, aún quedan cinco módulos. Y si alguna área de oportunidad ustedes mismos se detectan, pues aprovechen eso y hagan la tarea, así como les he dicho, y ya van a ver, súper rápido. ¿eh? Se puede avanzar en esto y corregir fácilmente. So, not a big deal. De eso se trata todo. So, tonight, we have to talk about a new topic. And, I'm, oh, yes, I have it here. On your book. It is page 23. Page 23. We have more paired conjunctions. Other paired conjunctions that we haven't started. Where is it? There it is. Okay. So if you see my screen, we have other paired conjunctions. We have either or whether or so if somebody can help me let me see let me think norma carolina could you please read either or present a choice between two options the verb which follows to subject joining by or must agree with the second subject Thank you. The verb which follows two subjects joined by or must agree with the second subject. So, in other words, in otras palabras. So, look at this example. Millennials are either 
self-entitled or self-centered. Now, in this case, I'm not using a verb. No estoy ocupando un verbo después de or. Esto, the verb which follows two subjects joined by or, must agree with the second subject. Aplica para esto. El verbo que, que se precede sería um, a los dos sujetos unidos por or debe de concordar con el segundo sujeto. So, es decir, este que está acá. Okay. Si mi sujeto es singular, va a ser un verbo singular. Si mi sujeto es tercera persona, en este caso. Okay. So, either John or Rick plays basketball. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Either John or Rick plays basketball. If either, John. If either. En, ese, en eso, al, ahora... Aterricemos la idea y se lo puedo decir en español porque necesito que quede claro esto. Esto es para opciones entre dos cosas. Ok. Look at the examples. Millennials are either self-entitled or self-centered. Self-entitled, it means that they do everything by themselves. They don't need anybody's help. They are self-entitled, self-empowered. Or self-centered, selfish, selfish, agarrados, egoístas, okay, selfish, self-centered. It's all about me. It's me. I'm the most important person in the world. I'm unique, self-centered. Got it? Okay, so millennials are either one thing or the other. So how do you understand either? What is the meaning of either? Mm -hmm. Either or. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> yes, that's it. Oh, oh. Second example, either John or Rick is going to prepare the progress report on the project. Give me another example. I, I eat uh, either, either pizza or hamburgers. Or hamburgers. Hamburgers. Okay. Yeah, that's a good example. I eat either pizza or hamburger. I'm not sure if I want to eat either pizza or hamburger. Okay, another easier example to indicate two options. And this is an indication. Either close the door or come inside. Can you translate? Either close the door or come inside. Cierras la puerta o estás... Where is, where is to be? Where is the verb to be, Manuel? Either close the door or come, in, come inside. Come on. Either close the door or come inside. O cierras la puerta. La puerta. O cierras la puerta o... O, o te vienes. O entras. O entras. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Or close the door. Come either inside. close the door or come inside. Okay. Now, be careful. Sometimes you can give the option just with either as the following example. You can choose either glass. You can choose either glass. It's okay. You can choose either glass. Can somebody translate? You can choose either class. It's okay. Don't worry. Mm 
okay? You are new on the office. You can choose either, oh, sorry, either chair. You can choose either chair, don't worry. Marilena, apague su cámara para que le entendamos bien. Ay, no, mi internet es un fastidio. Que puedes escoger otra silla. ¿Otra? Either. Hay 10 sillas ahí. You can choose either chair. Cualquier silla. Cualquier silla. There you go. Ojo, eh. Where is the or? There's no or. Okay. Okay. Teacher, can I use this in negative? Yes, you can use this in negative as well. Keep an eye on this. I don't think either team will win. I don't think either team will win. None of the two. None of the two. I don't think either team will win. Come on, Norma, everybody. Actualito, actualito, hemos 10. Um, hay 10 alumnos. De los 10 alumnos, solo puedo ver a dos. Wow. Okay. I don't think either team will win. No creo que gane ninguno de los dos equipos. I don't think either team will win. How would you say, no creo que ella elija alguno de los dos? No creo que ella elija alguno de los dos. Maybe I don't think she either show <laughs> okay, I don't think she will choose choose mm -hmm. either one of them. Either one. I decía Marilena, um it's a fun it's fun because I go to the park with they, decía Jaira, them, with they, no, with them. And yes, I don't, it me come in think, I'm sorry. I don't think she will choose either one of them. I don't think. Me come in think. So I don't think she will choose either one of them. No creo que ella elija a ninguno de los dos. A ninguno de los dos, a ninguno de ellos. Ok. And there are other examples. Um, we can use this on. But mainly today we will focus on either or. So the first example, either close the door or come inside. So. Either John or Rick is going. Okay, give me more examples. Can somebody make another example? Okay, let's practice either or. So, everybody. Everybody, yeah. Okay. What you what you tell your kids every day, right? Okay, translate, please. Go on the chat and translate. Either come. 
chat, 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 chat. Go to the chat. Let's see, either you come or punish you. Marlena, el sujeto. <laughs> either you come or I punish you. <laughs> okay, either, oh, I didn't copy it, okay. Um, or I punish you. Either you come or, or I punish you. Very good. Either you come, okay. Either to, either you tell me, or we never come back here. Very good. Good job. Bien, Marilena, super bien. Solo hay que corregir eso, los sujetos, antes del verbo. Either you tell me, either you tell me, or we, ojo, así ah, está en presente, or we never come back here. We never come back here, diría un americano, no more. Either you tell me or we never come back here no more. Tal cual, textual. Okay, number three, come on everybody. Susana, either you tell me or we never come back no more. Or we never come back no more. Uh -huh. Exactly. Okay. O vemos duro de matar 15 o Rambo 17. Only two more, just two more. Yeah. 
How do you say duro de matar in English? Come on. Oh, there you go, Diana. Good. Either we watch Die Hard. <laughs> the name of the movie in English is Die Hard. Die Hard. Or <laughs> Rambo 17. <laughs> That's right. Either we watch Die Hard 15 or Rambo 17. It's up to you. What does it It's up to you. It's your call. Another way, it's your call. Either Nelson or Mario can speak German. Easy. Okay, como decís, depende de ti o hay bebos. It's up to you. It's your call. Y ese it's your call puede significar también te toca. Eh? Ahí te hablan vos. Cuando decís a alguien, eh, eh, te hablan. Right? It's your call. Right? That's for you. Ese es para ti. Either we watch Die Hard or Rambo 17. I think we got the idea. So on your book, on page... What is it? I lost it. Okay. Oh, there it is. Page 23, we have an exercise with six examples. So you have to use either or, or, oh, wait a minute. We, we haven't talked about whether or, whether or. So I need someone to read. Who wants to read? Whether or. Wait, let me choose someone. <clears throat> Good, Mario Villeda. No, okay. Did we I can wait at teacher. Okay, Diana, thank you. Whether or, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Whether or is used to express doubt or choice between two possibilities. Hmm. Examples. Examples. The new guy didn't know whether or to quit or to keep his job during his first day. I don't know whether millennials are difficult to work with or not. Easy. Thank you very much. So as simple as that, these are used to express doubt or choice between two, two possibilities. We continue selecting options. I don't know whether I'm going to do it today or tomorrow. And I don't know whether I'm going to do it or today or tomorrow. I don't know whether I'm going to the beach or not. Okay. I don't know whether I'm breaking up with her or not. Mm, I don't know whether I'm repairing my car or selling it. I don't, I don't know. Okay, doubt, doubt. Okay, um, I don't know whether I like pupusas or not. Okay, so that's the first example. Indignation. This doesn't make sense to me. I'll try to find out whether she's at the office. Hmm. Um, if you use this with like whether or not, this could mean um not in a specific translation. Listen to the next example. Alicia has made up her mind. She'll resign whether or not she gets this other job. It's like when you are still in doubt, you know, she will resign whether or not she gets this other job. What are we saying? ¿Qué estamos expresando con ese ejemplo? She'll resign whether or not she gets this other job. 
I will resign whether or not I get this other job. Whether or not. Mm -hmm. So what's the meaning of weather? How do you translate just the word weather? Okay, there is no translation. There is no direct translation. A new guy didn't know whether to quit or to keep his job during his first day. La traducción más directa de weather podría ser ya sea que. Okay. Ya sea que o. Una traducción más también podría ser sí. Sí. Y esto, si ya vieron um, conditionals, si ya vieron los condicionales, en los condicionales se puede ocupar if, que quiere decir sí como condicionante, o puedo decir whether. También puedo decir when. Ok, when. Esos tres se pueden ocupar en condicionantes. So, um, questions. No, okay. So remember, doubt or choice between two possibilities. So let's get together. Let's use this examples. Okay. Uh, let's complete, fill in the blanks. You can use either or or whether or. Ahora, si aún está claro el tema y alguno del grupo ya lo entendió, por favor, ayude a sus compañeros, ¿verdad? A poder a um, entenderlo. Aunque me hablen en español ahorita, lo que necesito es que entiendan cómo se utiliza esto. Si alguien tiene duda, este es el momento de decir, hey, mira, ya estoy perdido con esto. ¿Cómo es ent ¿Qué has entendido vos? Right? Okay, that's the whole point before we apply it. Okay, let's go. Page 23. Marios and Jorge, please join your groups. Jorge y Mario Valle, si me escuchan, únanse a sus grupos porque solo quedaron Cristia y Silvia ahí solitas practicando. So please, if you can join, thank you. Me acabo de unir al grupo ahorita, pero según lo que entendí es que vamos a hacer el ejercicio. Ese de rellenar los, los blanks, uh -huh. utilizando el weather, or. Teacher, Así es, cuando... teacher. Teacher. Yep. ¿Me podría ayudar a explicarme uh -huh. el weather, por favor? Weather prácticamente significa ya sea que. Eh, eso, eh, directamente. Entonces, por ejemplo, si digo no sé eh, si lo voy a hacer ahora o mañana, no sé. Es, 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 la traducción sería sí. 
como una condicionante cuando se tiene la opción entre dos situaciones. I don't know whether I'm going to do it today or tomorrow. No sé si lo voy a hacer ahora o mañana. Sí o. Así, sí o. Okay. Entonces hay duda o estoy expresando una opción entre dos cosas. I'll try to find out whether she's at the office or not. Ok. Trataré de averiguar. I'll try to find out whether she's at the office or not. Trataré de averiguar si está en la oficina o no. Ok. ¿Mm? Quizá. Ok. okay. Um, ¿Cómo diría entonces Silvia? Yo hago la tarea si estoy cansado o no. Sí o sí tengo que hacer la tarea. Ajá. Yo hago la tarea, ya sea que esté cansado o no. ¿Sería? Uh, en inglés. Of course. Ajá. Uh, Yo hago la tarea. I, I make a... I do... Oh, perdón. I do the homework whether I so tired or I'm tired. Uh -huh. I'm tired or or not. Or not. Very good. Okay. Ahí está. Muy bien. I do the homework whether I'm tired or not. Okay. Y podría incluso agregar el always. I always do the homework whether I'm tired or not. Yo siempre me baño, haga frío o no. Ajá. Cristian, okay. yo siempre me baño, eh, haga frío o no. I always take a shower, whether it's cold, cold, cold or, not. or not. Simple. Mm -hmm. You got it. Bien. Ahora hay que hacer los ejercicios en la página 23, ¿ok? okay Thanks. Thanks. Voy a ver un librito. Peter. Peter. Para mí la... Para mí, la tercera... Um... Sí, la tercera. Um, uh -huh. either, either you decide to uh -huh. encourage millennials mm -hmm. ambition mm -hmm. or oh. to set for 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 Darius for their will depend es que es bien larga pero will depend on your development and whether is Use to express the extension on the two possibilities. Mm. Hmm. Here is for mm. no physical. Okay. Yeah? Here is for two options. And where is for an I saw express the oh, express the duda mm -hmm. you just say to encourage me entonces sería whether whether you decide to decide um, okay. wait pongámosle whether Puede. La cuatro. Yo. Yo, either. Hey, either. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. hey, hey, either. La cinco. Be. 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 Be.
Social media, las cinco, vamos, va. Sí. Being uh, in charge of millennium is difficult. Weather. Yeah. weather. I think. Well. You weather grab communicators around respect or their will fit on a price. On a price. <laughs> Social media has enabled millennium. Se me acaba la batería en la máquina. Ay, sácame. Ay, no, pero ahí está el, el cargador. Social me media has a number, millennium has to be a powerful vehicle for marketing. Where? You shall use it to express it to establish you and the possibilities. Sí. Sí, porque hay dos posibilidades. Uh -huh. Ajá, que puede ser buena y puede ser mala, dice. Ajá. Pero ah. hay una duda, hay una duda, dice ahí. Entonces, bueno. Ajá. Bueno. Pero finish, teacher. Te buena a ver. <laughs> okay, okay, super good. Give me just a minute. Let me see if the last group is done. Okay. Bien. Okay, so we have either weather, weather, either, either weather. Weather, either, weather, either, either weather. Are you saying it different? <laughs> <laughs> The films, the first was either. The first el, was either, yes. El uno, weather. El dos, either. No. El tres, no. 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 One is either. Yes. ¿Cómo? Number one is either. 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 Ah, okay. The future of the company depends on either there is an investment or not employee training. Y el dos. Number two. Either. O weather. <laughs> Number two. Ay, no me acuerdo. Weather. Weather. Uh -huh. Weather. 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 Uh -huh. What are the uh -huh. most wild opportunity for learning? Or the millennials will start asking for a change. No, la verdad que este hoy, en este ejercicio sí me he quedado, me he quedado que no entiendo, pero en este, este exactamente, sí segundo. había entendido los ejemplos, pero en esa cosa no, no entiendo. Y aquí, acuérdese que en weather es, es se usa para, para un, para una opción entre Ajá. dos. Ya me perdí. Como que no, bueno, que, lo que no entiendo en sí es eso, tal vez al traducirlo ya entiendo, pero con las oraciones me quedo en la luz. Porque 
Porque en los ejemplos sí había entendido, pero en esto ya me trabé. Es que tiene que como buscar cosas que le indiquen, que tienen duda. Una duda. Vale, entonces Para en ver. este... Uh -huh. vale. El futuro de una compañía depende sobre esto es una investigación o intentar con aquel otro de la cosa. Es a choice. No me queda claro, pero bueno, ya vamos a ver. ¿Por qué? Bueno. No, las oraciones creo que ya el traducirlas, tal vez sí. Porque yo ver, va, de, yo, con, con either there is investment or not employee training. Va, entonces esta es either, la una. Yes. La dos. The boss provides for learning. All done then. Ese sí es weather, es sí, sí, tal cosa, entonces pasaría, no sé qué, algo así. El tres. El tres es weather también. Yes, I think because. El 4 es either. El 3 es weather y el 4 es either. El 5 es either y el 6 es weather. Yes, ¿Cómo? Yes. Yes. Ok. Thank you. Yes. Give me a Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Always. <laughs> That's good. Let's go then. No.
Okay, how many are we? 11. Okay, so let's resolve this together because I, I noticed many of you were very thoughtful, you know, like, mm, I don't know. Let's see. So let's go with number one. Is it either or or whether or? The future of a company depends on. Either. Whether. Whether. Hmm. Whether. Yes. 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 It's whether. Why? Ojo con la escritura de esta palabra. Sorry. Weather. Se puede equivocar uno y poner como que si fuera la clima, ¿no? It's too small. <coughs> so. The future of a company depends on whether there is an investment or a not. on employee training. So again, the future of a company depends on weather. As I told you, weather means si or ya sea que. So the future of a company depends on. El futuro de una compañía depende ya sea de que si hay. Depende de que haya o no. No hay traducción a veces de esa palabra. ¿eh? Les decía, a veces no tiene significado. La, el futuro de una compañía depende de que haya o no ¿eh? una inversión en, en el entrenamiento del personal. Something like that. So it's an option between. I mean, a. Uh, two options you're selecting between two options okay make sense okay let's go with number two either 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 okay either the bus provides opportunities for learning or the or the millennials uh-huh Go ahead. Or the millennials will start. We'll asking start asking for a change. Can you translate it, Dianita? Yes. O el jefe comienza a dar oportunidades de aprendizaje o los millennials van a comenzar a pedir el cambio. Comenzarán. Comenzarán. <laughs> Comenzarán a pedir un cambio. Ok, se van a que ver al jefe. Y así son en la vida real los millennials. <laughs> Perdón, somos. Ok. <laughs> So let's see. <laughs> okay. Teacher, so, parenthesis. Yep. Eh, sí. Uh, no tengo muy, muy así. Eh, tengo duda de cuando se refiere. ¿A qué se refiere de millennials? ¿De qué año? ¿A qué año? O por qué ah, tipo? ya lo vamos a ver. Ok. Ya lo vamos a ver. A ver, déjame ver. Where is it? Oh, no, I don't have it handy. Pero sí, ya pronto, de hecho. Parece que mañana toca ese tema. Where is it? There's some plans. Okay, let me check really quick because I'm doubtful too. I like that topic actually. And tomorrow, okay. Describe millennials' characteristics tomorrow. Then we have stereotypes of millennials on the day after tomorrow. How millennials' characteristics influence the workplace, provide tips for managers to lead with my millennials okay. effectively state characteristics of x and y generations compare both generations x and y so yeah next topics are going to be very funny please don't miss your classes okay number three someone else christia what's going on sylvia susana norma mario 
Jorge, are you working? I participate. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, number three. Weather, teacher. Weather? Weather? Weather. Weather, mm -hmm. weather you decide. Okay, whether you decide, uh, I don't know, whether you decide to encourage millennials' ambitions or to set boundaries for their behavior will depend on your development plan for employees. Yeah. Now I will add if after whether this example or actually after decide, let me see whether you decide if no, whether you decide to encourage millennials' ambitions or to spend race for their behavior. Le pone Will depend on your development. Okay, translate it. Go ahead. <laughs> Decides animar, motivar las ambiciones de los millennials o te pones límites. O poner límites. Uh -huh. De comportamiento. Uh -huh. Will depend. Hace un momento me decías que would quiere decir iría. Yeah. How do you translate will to Spanish? Will. Will. Ajá, el futuro. Will. ¿Cómo lo traduces al español la palabra will? Ra. Ra. Ra, re, ri, ro, ru. No, mentiras. Ra, re. <laughs> Ra, re. Así como lo hiciste antes, Manuel. Muy bien. Would, ría. Will, re, ra. Remos, ras. So, agrega esa partícula al verbo. So, keep translating. Ya sea, o oh, perdón, si tú decides eh, um, animar, motivar las ambiciones de los millennials o fijar límites a su comportamiento ajá Manuel will depend on your development ah, plan for employees ajá. dependerá 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 es que no había visto la, la tercera parte ah oh, ok <ríe> Siento, dependerá de su, su desempeño mm. yeah. de su plan will depend on your development plan dependerá de su Plan de desarrollo para los empleados. Okay, let's go with number four before Diana falls asleep. Okay, number four. <laughs> weather, teacher. Weather. Either. Either. You either let them express either. their ideas. Ideas. There you either. go. Yeah, you either let them express their ideas or let them go so rough okay <laughs> so raw this is so raw tan crudo you are difficult the millennials millennials are difficult yeah. it's just that there is a misconception and we will see it tomorrow there is a misconception between millennials and ninis now you know Mala percepción ahí. Entre millennials y ninis. Ok. Number five. Oh, I'm sorry. How do you translate number four? Everybody, everybody. O los dejas deja expresar sus Simple. ideales o los dejas ir. Simple. Right. Number five. Being in charge of millennials is difficult. You... Either. Either. <clears throat> yep, you either. Either. Rep. 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 
Okay, you either wrap communication around respect or <clears throat> they will feel unappreciated. Un uh, unappreciated. Unappreciated. Okay, translate. Go ahead. Ser encargado de los millennials es difícil. O sea que tú. Grab, I don't know. Grab. Tarea. Sting. Sting. Wrapped around your finger. Buena canción. Wrapped around your finger. Sting. Okay. Wrap. Envolver. Mm. Mm. I don't know, teacher. Diana? Mm. I'm thinking. Oh. Rap is like la a comunicación food. a través del respeto o ellos se van a sentir menospreciados. No entendí cómo traducis, tradujiste Pero... rap. <laughs> Eh, girar, giras tu comunicación alrededor sí, del mucho. respeto o alrededor. Ajá. O envuelves la comunicación alrededor del respeto o. Ah, synonym for envolver. Hombres. Yeah. Ajá. It's, yeah, like so. a, it's like a food teacher. Rap. Rap. Ajá, exactly. That's why they call them. The wrap. Envuelto. Ajá, the wrap. El envuelto. El envuelto cabal. O, ah, o envuelves comunicación. tu comunicación. Alrededor del respeto. Es decir, o. Oh... Ay. Guías. O sea, es como el sinónimo de, 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 de guiar, de dirigir la comunicación alrededor del respeto. Entonces, siempre tiene que ser el respeto ahí. Or they will feel unappreciated. Irónicamente, ya. Yeah. Un millennial se siente menospreciado si no se le trata con respeto, a pesar de que ellos no son respetuosos en el contexto que se le da a los millennials en estos libros. Okay. So, last, social media has enabled millennials to be a powerful vehicle, vehicle for marketing, marketing. Social media has enabled millennials to be powerful vehicle for marketing. Weather? Yes. Yes, definitely. Weather because it's doubtful, right? Look, so easy to get confused. Weather. This is for good or bad. It is still, it is, it is still to be seen. It's still to be seen. It is still to be seen. It is still to be seen. Translate. You can see the media. Social media. Uh-huh. Uh, las, las redes sociales. Redes sociales. Mm -hmm. uh -huh han habilitado a los millennials para ser un poderoso vehículo de mercadeo. Good. <ríe> uh -huh. Sea que este sea bueno o malo. Sí. It is Ahora está por verse. ¿Aún sí. está? Por verse. Por verse. Very uh -huh. good. Ya sea que esto sea bien raro, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Y en salvadoreño sería. Sea bueno o malo. Yo sé que esto sea bueno o malo. Sea bueno o malo. Sea bueno o malo. Ajá. Eso que solemos decir. ¿no? Ya sea que sea bueno. Sea bueno o malo. Está por verse. Ok. You made it. Good job. Let me take a screenshot of this and send it to your WhatsApp so you can resolve it on your book. Is it difficult? A little confused. 
a, a little, little confused, confusive, little, con, yes. confusing, confusive, confusive. It's a little confusive. Okay, hold on. Okay, let's go with out of the context examples. Help me. Weather teacher. <laughs> Rewrite it. Rewrite it. Okay, somebody rewrite it. In this game, you oh, you either okay, yes, either win or lose. It okay, depends on you. Do we all agree, Wendy? What do you think? Yeah, in this game, you either win or lose, it depends on you. It's up to you. I would have said that I prefer these words, it's up to you. Next, this is my offer. You take it, leave it. Wendy, Susana, Norma, Silvia, you're so quiet, Marios, Jorge, Marilena, did we lose you? Diego is working. This is my offer. You either take it or leave it. Very good. That's it. Ahora, necesito que los demás también participen, porfa. Vamos, chicos. Okay, so that was that one. Let's go with the next one. This is easy. This is easier. Wendy, where are you? Try it. Sylvia, try that. When I go to the restaurant, I eat fish, roast chicken. These are my favorite meals. Options, two options. When I go to the restaurant, I eat either fish or roast chicken. Very good, Sylvia. These are my favorite meals. Either take it or leave it. Very good, Manuel. Okay, and the last, I mean, another example. Let's see. This is easy as well. You have two options. ¿Cómo sería decirle esto a este tipo? 
El siguiente ejemplo. Ok, ajá. Weather. Weather Charlie or Bill will write the report. Just ask one of them. Hmm. Sea que Charlie o, o Bill escribirán. What do you think, Wendy? Oh, look at that, Susana. Either Charlie or Bill will write the report. Just as one of them. Yeah, either or. Tienes yeah. dos opciones. O Carlos o William escribirán either el or. reporte. Uh -huh. O Carlos o William. ¿Cómo sería decirle esto? ¿Quién me ha robado dinero ahorita? <laughs> Marilena, that's good. Okay, you return the money you had stolen. I'll call the police. Repeat, please. It's on the chat. You return the money you had stolen. I'll call the police. Oh, this is weather. Mm. Whether you return. Whether you return the money you had stolen or I'll call the police. What do you think? Again, no you have chat, two options. ¿Verdad, Wendy? No. Ahí tiene que aparecerle. Pero el bio. anterior sí, el de Bill y Charlie, pero el otro no. Qué raro. Uh, pues, Ciérralo y vuelve a abrir. Vamos a ver. Whether you return the money you had stolen or I'll call the police. Either you return the money or I'll call the police. Yes, yes. Ah, si tratas de traducir eso te va a salir como sí. I think it's either. Es either. either. Tengo dos opciones. O esta o la otra. De dos sopas hay. ¿Cuál quiere? Either, entonces es teacher. Yes, it's either. Yep. So I'll send you a link where I was taking these examples from. Es que estaba sacando los ejemplos ahí en el WhatsApp. Either or whether in this exam. Either, either. or. Either or. Either or. Mm -hmm. oh. That's right. Okay. Bien, eh, por último, ayer le decía que íbamos a hablar rapidito de una técnica de resolución de conflictos o a problem solving technique. Problem solving technique. Y eso se puede aplicar en su vida, en casos prácticos, en gerencia, incluso para llegarle al jefe. Antes de llegarle al jefe, hay que llevar a cabo este proceso que es un proceso lógico de pensamiento nada más que eso so it's a problem solving technique hace algunos años no estaba esto en el internet pero hoy sí ya se encuentra problem solving technique so let's say that I I have a problem bien vamos a empezar por los pasos de un solo mejor ok Definir el issue. What's the problem? Y ojo con esto, solo hay un problema. Ok. No es que sean varios, no. It's one problem. Number two, what caused the problem? ¿Qué fue lo que causó el problema? ¿Cómo llegué ahí? Eso es importante para reflexionar qué fue lo que causó el problema. ¿Ok? Y a raíz de eso, de identificar las causas del problema, voy a poder identificar possible solutions. Lastly, well, number four, select one solution. And the last one, execute. Let me try to 
make sure I got that right because I always make a problem out of that word. Yeah, execute. Oh, hello, Tony Robbins. Take massive action. So, definir el problema súper rápido. ¿Cuál es el problema? Estoy gordo. ¿Será ese el problema? No. ¿Cuál es el problema? Mis hábitos. Ah, sí es el problema. Estoy muy gordo. Tengo sobrepeso. Ese es mi problema ahorita. Me está afectando la salud. Ok. Ese es el problema. Estoy gordo. Choncho, rechancho. Ok. ¿Qué causó el problema? Mis hábitos. La alimentación. Ok. La mala alimentación. Mala alimentación, malos hábitos, ¿verdad? Comer comida chatarra, todo eso. Possible solutions. Hacer ejercicio. Hacer ejercicio. ¿Qué más? O sea, ir al gimnasio. ¿Cómo Como voy a hacer sano. ejercicio? Eat healthy. Ok. Una dieta. Good. Ok. Get a nutritionist. Hey, Jorge, hi. Visit a nutritionist. Visit a nutritionist. Yeah. And so on, right? Y así, tantas posibles soluciones. Y aquí viene, aquí empieza lo más difícil de esto. Elegir una solución. Solo una solución. Porque tenés que ser bien realista con los pies sobre la tierra, tomar una decisión, ¿qué es lo que vas a hacer? Tomando en cuenta que lo vas a hacer. Y en este punto es donde empezás a considerar presupuesto, tu realidad, tengo una rodilla lesionada, no puedo ir al gimnasio. Bueno, dieta. ¿Cómo no? Comer sano. Time. Time, tenés que evaluar el tiempo también. Correcto. Aún hacer una dieta involucra incrementar el presupuesto hoy en día, porque es más caro ir al ¿Sí? mercado. Carísimo las verduras. No, 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 es carísimo ir a la... O sea, comprar verduras hoy en día es... It's, it's crazy, it's vegetables. Ok, ahora bien, ¿ya tomaste una decisión? Take massive action, eso quiere decir metele, enfocate, disciplinate. Comprométete contigo mismo que lo vas a alcanzar. Y ese, ahora, esto aplica para todo en la vida. ¿Sí? Quiero aprender inglés. ¿Ok? No he aprendido inglés. ¿Qué es lo que ha causado ese problema? Que no le dedico tiempo. Que no sigo una dieta estricta para aprender inglés. ¿Ok? que no he conseguido clases privadas, no tengo dinero para pagar clases privadas porque me urge aprenderlo. O sea, tantas razones, ¿no? Y pues definir una solución que voy a hacer y ejecutarla. Es que eso es lo más importante. Eso aplica en todo tipo de situaciones. Me quiero divorciar. Estoy cansado. Ese es el principal problema. Estoy harto. Ok. ¿Qué causa ese problema? Al final te vas a dar cuenta que tú mismo te estás causando el problema. Así que... ¿Qué solución voy a tomar? Tú mismo la tienes que tomar. Entonces, y así, ¿no? Eso es muy importante. Ahora, si tú seguís esto paso a paso, ni siquiera vas a llegar donde el jefe a decirle, mire, tengo este problema. Ahora le vas a decir, descubrí que tengo ese problema en el trabajo, esto es lo que he pensado hacer, he tomado la decisión de hacer esto, y así lo voy a hacer. ¿Me parece? ¿Bien? So, think about it, guys. Tonight, I'm staying with Diego, are you there, Diego? Yes, teacher, but not you're, for tonight. Not tonight. You're working, Jorge Humberto. Present, teacher. Will you stay 10 minutes? Uh, okay. Sure. Yes, 10 minutes. Okay. Carlos Alfredo Palomo Pineda was not here today. Claudia Maria Melendez Santos. No. Okay. Cristian Nata Liderazo Rogel. Present and good night. Good night. Diana Elizabeth Chereguiño Martínez. Present teacher, good night. Good night. Good night. Diego good Armando night. López Rivas. Uh, Present good teacher. Night. Thank you. Jorge Humberto Vela Funes. Present. Juan Carlos Rivas Jovel. Manuel Antonio Palma. 
Present teacher, good night. Good night, María Elena Guadalupe Peña Escobar. Present teacher, Guadalupe. good night. Good night, Mario. Same to you. Mario Ernesto Vieda. Present teacher. Thank you, good night. Mario José Valle Castaneda. Is there. Nelson René Olmedo Figueroa, Norma Carolina Villeda Ábalos. Present teacher. Good night. night. Silvia Zuleima Rodríguez de González. Good night. Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. Good night. Good night. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Present teacher. Good night. Blessings. Good night. Blessings. Okay. Hey, George, what happened to you tonight? I I had to work so late. Really? Until late? Yes. Hmm. That's the problem, but, but I, I'm kind of sleepy. I bet you are. What but, is it? What is it exactly? that you do I mean is your job like physical or is it more administrative than anything in fact uh, is administrative repeat uh, with me uh, repeat with me as a matter of fact as a matter of fact is administrative uh, is administrative but I had the opportunity to go outside to to see the the advance of the work and and the the project complete, mm -hmm. but uh, most of the time uh, uh, in the computer in the office doing doing what doing contract or help to the UASI. That's, that is the management of acquisitions acquisition. Acquisition, uh -huh. and contractation and, mm -hmm. and contract. Uh, it's kind of a link between the, the main office or how do you say central office, but but uh, headquarters headquarters and the the office here in san miguel mm. and you yeah. are in san miguel right now yes i'm in san miguel and i come back in in friday on friday on friday on friday but this weekend i I will have to be here because I have work to do. Hmm. And also to to get a couple of days because like uh, I say before I'm going to to go out to LA 16 May no, March. Oh, March 16th. On March 16th. March, six, March 16th. 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 There you go. 10th. 10th. 16th. 16th. Always. There you go. 16th. 16th, 17th, 19th. Always do that sound. So, Institutional Procurement and Contracting Unit. That's wasi in English. Wow. But but now is management because change the letter U mm -hmm. by E. Hmm. Okay. It's like gas management. Institutional procurement and contracting management. Uh that sounds weird. <laughs> Yes, uh, actually, that change happened in two on, months ago. 
Uh, it happened two months ago. Okay, that change happened two months ago. Wow, they they're changing a lot of names. I like the dumb, dumb, dumb municipal. I don't know. Ah. Development municipal development direction, I guess. Yeah. District or something like that. Yeah, it's good. I mean, and their job is really good, but that's because it's not a public um, company, right? It's not part of the government. They they are hired from private construct mm -hmm. construction companies, right? Yes. They do a great job. I mean, they they yeah. just they just redo redid. They redid the whole streets on my neighborhood. They are autonomous. Not as an NGO, not as an NGO, but independent. Independent. Yeah. They have autonomy. Yeah. They are self. What well, we saw that term today, self-empowered, something like that. Self-entitled. Self-entitled. Entitled, self entitled, yeah, self entitled. So that's what you do the whole day reviewing that they are going according to the plan, yes, uh, because the, the project is, is so big, so there are many, many parts, parts of this that uh, any any contractor has to do right now mm -hmm. so we need to to hire some companies to finish it and that increases the cost of the project yes, definitely there are uh, uh, canadian canadians company that are the designer of the project canadian they, canadian companies uh -huh. and they they prepare prepare some information to execute that 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 that, that work that activity mm -hmm. i remember i remember i i saw um i'm sorry i started uh planning on and in the university I started project management. Project management was a great, um, it was one of my favorite subjects in the university. And, and there was a guy from Medix, from the Medix, who used to be our teacher. It was a great, great guy. The funny thing is that his last name was Moreno, Lick, Lick Moreno, and he was, he was brown. <laughs> so, <laughs> He used to make fun of us, you know, make fun with us. He was a great guy, but he, he taught us a lot the importance of following up on the project in the middle, not just at the beginning and at the end, but in the middle, you know, go following up, making sure that the cost and the time matches. Uh, that, that is the problem because we, we work, we we work for the government, mm -hmm. so we had the, the money. We we need to pay to the contractors, the super, su, supervisor, and all the, the, the thing that happened here, we need to pay. So, but, but, so we, but uh, we have to, to sign for that. Hmm. It's, it's a, a lot of work. It's a big responsibility to to know that you are paying for for something that is real mm -hmm. and it's necessary. Man, but it's gonna be a great um project at the end. In the end, it's gonna be an awesome project, I think. As as a matter of fact, actually, we are in the in the last. Segment, uh, last segment of the project, and we we expect to finish it in maybe September. Finish or, it 
by September? By September, October. September. Wow. Wow. Well, this year is going to be full of surprises then. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for staying with me, Jorge. Go have some rest. Okay. Recover, recover your energies. Hope you have a wonderful night. Yes, same to you. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye.